Life-saving antibiotics revolutionised our society and economy. Previously deadly diseases became routine illnesses requiring little more than a brief treatment. These achievements are now at risk, mainly because of the excessive or inappropriate use of antimicrobials. The multiplication of national, European and international initiatives against antimicrobial resistance AMR, over the last decade reflect a shared commitment to actively tackle this global health threat. However, bridging the gap between declarations and concrete actions is the underpinning challenge that policymakers have to address. Supported by the EU Health Programme, the European Joint Action on Antimicrobial Resistance and Healthcare Associated Infections, EU JAMRAI, has been a unique place gathering all key actors in the fight against AMR. EU JAMRAI brings together 44 partners from 26 member states organisations such as the ECDC, EFSA, OECD and WHO, and 45 stakeholders involved in the field. Among them representatives of the civil society, health professionals, patient associations, actors from the animal and environmental sectors and companies. Its mission is to foster synergies among EU member states and propose concrete steps to strengthen the implementation of efficient and evidence-based One Health policies to tackle AMR and reduce healthcare-associated infections. AMR, antimicrobial resistance, is, as I said, a priority for us in the Commission and it's an explicit priority within the health programme. Well, AMR is a global issue and it's a One Health issue. We need to all work together to tackle this problem together because solving it in one place will doesn't solve it in another place. EU JAMRAI has fostered synergies to keep antibiotics working, producing concrete recommendations and promoting awareness and commitment by governments and stakeholders. We cannot forget that the joint forces of policymakers, international organizations and stakeholders is paramount for success in the global battle against AMR. For three and a half years, EU JAMRAI partners have worked in key areas to effectively move forward down the road of antimicrobial resistance and healthcare-associated infections reduction. The role of the coordination team has been crucial orchestrating and supporting the different working areas. As coordinator, we had an umbrella role. We follow the progress of each task towards our final goals, uh, ensure that we are uh, respecting the UC rules and regulations, implement the appropriate strategies, being prepared for expected risk, and react on time to the unexpected ones. Monitor our work to make the necessary adjustments, uh, facilitate communication, ensure smooth management of and flow of information between the JAMRAI Consortium, the European Commission, CHAPEA and DG Santé. There are three more cross-sectoral working areas essential for the good performance of any project. EU JAMRAI progress and results have been presented at more than 60 AMR relevant events. Academic posters, abstracts and peer-reviewed journals have been accepted in several health congresses and published in recognised science journals. Results have also been disseminated through EU JAMRAI website, quarterly newsletters and different social media channels enhanced with the production of original contents like infographics and video interviews. Several actions need to be maintained beyond the three and a half year duration of EU JAMRAI to ensure the sustainability of its results. The overarching task of the sustainability team has been to foster the integration into national policies of the recommendations issued by the joint action and also to encourage all key actors to expand and sustain the implementation of EU JAMRA results at all levels, European level, national level, regional level and local level. During the design of the EU JAMRA integration and sustainability plan, we have used different tools such as workshops, meetings or survey to keep partners, stakeholders or member states engaged. Another important step 
has been the identification of the priority measures to be maintained beyond the EU jam rights end. We have also coordinated the production of different policy briefs to support advocacy efforts and ensure that our recommendations reach our target audiences. Evaluation and monitoring efforts have been conducted along the life of the EU JAMRAI to verify that the project was being implemented as planned, reached its objectives and met the needs of the target groups. We are responsible for evaluating the uh, activities of the project of the EU JAMRAI and especially to um, assure that the project reaches the targets that have been planned in the due time and also the quality of these targets, helping also the other participants and the other groups to have uh, high quality outputs. EU JAMRAI has contributed to the bridge the gap between declarations and actions presenting concrete and operational actions with demonstrated potential to tackle AMR and reduce healthcare-associated infections. The Joint Action has coordinated the self-assessment of EU national action plans and used country-to-country -country visits to facilitate best practices exchange between Member States. The basis for a network of supervisory bodies in the human health sector has been established to facilitate collaboration between Member States and next steps will be discussed within the AMR One Health Network. Several campaigns to raise awareness, including a contest to find the first antibiotic resistance symbol, have been implemented. The evaluation of their impact and all lessons learned have been included in a toolkit for awareness raising and behaviour change communication on AMR. In the field of surveillance, EU JAMRAI has developed the framework of a surveillance network to monitor AMR in diseased animals, ears, vet. In human health, a near real-time surveillance system has been piloted in 17 institutions from 11 countries. In order to increase the prudent use of antibiotics, a repository with existing guidelines, tools and implementation methods for antibiotic stewardship in human health has been published. EU JAMRAI has also performed a qualitative study to identify enablers and barriers to stewardship implementation. In animal health, the Joint Action has conducted a survey to identify the core components needed for optimal implementation of antimicrobial stewardship in animals. To reduce healthcare-associated infections, EU JAMRAI has identified the gaps on implementation research and communication in the field. To contribute to fill these gaps, the Joint Action has published a list of infection control and prevention research priorities and piloted the implementation of guidelines and frameworks. Finally, in order to improve antibiotic access and innovation, EU JAMRAI research team has conducted in-depth interviews in 13 countries to understand the barriers and facilitators for incentives implementation. These are the, the very practical things that the Joint Action is doing. Um, so the sharing experience, the creation of tools and good practice to really enable uh, the take-up of that experience and the dissemination of the results and the working with partners including with organisations which are not originally part of the joint action but which want to help tackle antimicrobial resistance whether the pharmaceutical companies, nursing organisations, doctors organisations, students we show it that working and acting together, we can prepare an ecosystem of key actors from different sectors with one shared admission, building a healthier European Union. The depth and richness of this joint action are attributable to our common commitment, insightful leadership and strength of our teamwork. That's the beauty of this joint action and that's what guarantees its success. We have worked together on a project that will leave a lasting mark thanks to concrete results and recommendations. EU JAMRAI results will enable countries to strengthen the implementation of efficient and evidence-based measures to tackle AMR for the benefit of EU member states and their citizens. During the first 18 months of EU JAMRAI, 
14 participating countries completed several activities aimed at strengthening national response against AMR. The process followed the approach developed by WHO for the monitoring and evaluation of the implementation of the international health regulations through the joint external evaluation. In preparation for country-to-country -country visits, member states firstly self-assessed their national strategies and implementation of their national action plans and conducted a SWOT analysis. Member states performed the self-assessments to evaluate their national action plans and identify gaps. The results of the self-assessment raised a number of common issues, for example, difficulties in translating surveillance data into actions, the lack of resources, the challenge of working with a One Health approach as different areas require different priorities, or difficulties with dealing responsibilities on national and regional. Then, three pilot country-to-country -country visits were organised. Building up on the results and experiences of these activities, the methodology for the country-to-country -country visits was revised and updated. Using this methodology, expert teams of 13 EU member states visited their peers in other EU countries. The objectives of these visits were to evaluate their national action plans and One Health strategies, exchange best practices and discuss about future policy options. These country visits have demonstrated to be an effective cooperation working method that enables the identification of highly relevant common topics to discuss at European level. Country-to-country -country visits have also strengthened national responses. In Greece, for example, the visit accelerated the discussion between ministries and allowed the finalisation of the One Health Greek National Action Plan, signed in 2019 by the three ministers, Health, Agriculture and Environment. Another example can be found in Germany. The planning of their five years National Action Plan was based on the results of the country-to-country -country visits and the joint external evaluation. The visits also facilitated that financing and support for evidence-based national treatment guidelines are now ongoing. One Health country visits are a driver to work on AMR within the European Union. Countries perform first the self-assessment. They analyse the results, identify the gaps and reflect internally on how to improve the national situation. The country-to-country -country visit is the second step. This external assessment offers not only a more objective evaluation, but also the possibility to exchange views and experience and discuss about policy options with another country that might have experienced similar challenges. And visited countries don't feel audited because it is voluntary. The main conclusions of these country-to-country -country visits have been summarised on an interactive microsite that visualises who visited who and provides an overview of best practices for different AMR topics. Infection, prevention and control, surveillance, One Health, governance, coordination, awareness, supervision, budget, political commitment and antimicrobial stewardship. In order to ensure the sustainability of EU GMRI work, we have selected several measures to be implemented into Member States' national action plans. One of them is the urgent need to establish common EU indicators and targets to monitor the progress of the implementation of each national action plan. These are crucial to ensure that all member states reach the same level of achievements. EU JAMRI has established the basis for a network of supervisory bodies in the human health sector. The aim of the network is to facilitate collaboration and the exchange of views and best practices about shortcomings or common problems in the implementation evaluation and supervision of AMR activities in the National Action Plans. The members of the network are competent authorities, professional associations or any other institutions in the member states responsible for the control, evaluation, enforcement or supervision of AMR-related activities in the human health sector. Representatives of these authorities in different member states were interviewed to gather insights in the creation of the network. All of them highlighted the need for the establishment of a European network of supervisory bodies. The conclusions will be presented and the next steps will be further discussed within the AMR One Health Network. The result of the Jamarai project is that there is now a basis 
for a network of supervisory bodies working in the field of AMR. Given the fact that supervision or accreditation, certification or monitoring is organized differently among the participating countries, these countries seek opportunities to exchange experiences and best practices to contribute to be a driving force behind the national action plans. In this way, supervision can contribute to fight AMR even more effectively. We must acknowledge the importance of communication and coordination between European member states to tackle AMR. One of the main conclusions of, from the work conducted by the One Health Strategies and National Action Plan team is that there is a pressing need to enhance cooperation between member states. An extended and strengthened AMR One Health network is crucial to achieve this purpose. This step is necessary to make the EU a best practice region. We will only obtain a full impact of the EU action plan against AMR if we address all the components of the One Health transsectoral approach. One of the main objectives of EU JAMRAI has been to increase awareness on antimicrobial resistance, promoting the responsible use of antibiotics and encouraging healthy habits among different target audiences. After delivering a social behaviour change communication strategy based on a global approach, EU JAMRAI started the design and implementation of several dynamic activities. The objective has been taking the global issue of AMR and making it meaningful to society at a local level. For doing so, the support of EU JAMRAI partners designing and implementing the following raising awareness activities has been crucial. Don't leave it halfway is a video series of four announcements. With a touch of humour, the key message highlights the importance of following the prescription given by the healthcare professional. Available in 18 languages, the online campaign was launched to celebrate 2018 European Antibiotic Awareness Day and reached 2.7 million people in one month. The AMR webinar for journalists is an online training opportunity with clear and accurate scientific information from senior tutors with long experience in the fight against AMR. We had the privilege to have senior tutors from UGM RAI, ECDC and FAO. The topics of the webinar cover the impact of AMR in human health and animal health, the ways in which Europe is facing this global health challenge and the important role of the media. In 2018, EU JAMRAI ran a social media listening to find out what was being said about the antimicrobial resistance on the internet. One of the main conclusions was that the concept One Health was not being used. EU JAMRAI designed the social media campaign One Health Butterfly Effect to raise awareness about this complex concept. The One Health approach recognizes that human health, animal health and environment are interconnected. Efforts by just one sector are not enough to tackle antimicrobial resistance. We need to design and implement policies, programs and research in which multiple sectors are working together. However, this mission can be seen as a very overwhelming task. Under the claim, everybody can flap their wings to create a One Health butterfly effect, the audience was engaged, highlighting that we all have a role to play and that individual small changes can have large effects. Specific posts with attractive images and short key messages were created for different target audiences on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and widely disseminated with the support of our stakeholders and partners. Given the complexity of introducing antibiotic resistance in the curricular programme of schools, EU JAMRAI decided to develop the game app Micro Combat to facilitate that the subject is treated during school hours. Based on the card game developed by the IAS Global Research Institute, Micro Combat app is available in 19 languages and allows users to play remotely with people from their own environment or from anywhere in the world. 
Designed for 10 years old players and older, it allows introducing what types of pathogens we are exposed to, how we can prevent the spread of infectious diseases, and how much more effective preventing is than the subsequent treatment of diseases, or what antimicrobial resistance is. The magic of this game is that kids learn while playing and having fun. Firstly, they learn science, and secondly, since it is a cooperative game, they learn to be better citizens, because they experience that some threats can only be tackled by working together. EU Jamrai called to action individuals from all over the world and organised a contest to find the first global antibiotic resistance symbol. Something tangible that anyone, anywhere, can make at home and wear with pride, like the AIDS red ribbon. The contest generated a lot of discussion in social media, reaching over 600,000 people and got 600 applications from 44 countries. A multi-sectoral jury with members from several organisations involved in the fight against AMR selected the design of David Jungberg. Jungberg is a Swedish product designer and art director with multiple awards for his work in advertising. He now specialises in user-focused design that bridges the communication gap between science and the general public. The concept of the antibiotic resistance symbol is very simple. Two hearts slide together, turning into an X shape made of antibiotic pills. The capsules set the theme. The hearts tell us we need to care and the band-aids tell us there is something to fix. The winning symbol was launched to celebrate the 2020 European Antibiotic Awareness Day. Um, thanks to a strong digital campaign, we reached uh, almost 2 million people in only the first two months. The campaign has had a remarkable impact on Twitter, where many organisations and personalities supported the initiative, sharing pictures wearing the symbol. The response was very positive from the beginning, but this is a long distance race. There are not quick wins when promoting behavior change. Now we have to keep going and we need the support of all member states and stakeholders to popularize the use of this great symbol. In order to ensure the sustainability of these activities, we have developed a plan to integrate them within national policies. EU Jamrai has also developed a toolkit to guide countries and partners in their efforts to raise awareness of, on AMR, collecting all the results and lessons learned by the communication team. We cannot underestimate that promoting behaviour change is our biggest challenge. We need to find ways to engage all sectors of society and ensure that they feel part of the solution because we all have a role to play in the fight against AMA. Having strong One Health surveillance systems for antimicrobial resistance is one of the pillars to tackle this global health threat. Currently, the European Union coordinates antimicrobial resistance surveillance through two of its agencies. In the medical sector, the ECDC monitors AMR in diseased individuals through the EARSnet and the FWD net. In the animal and food sectors, the EFSA monitors AMR in zoonotic and commensal bacteria from healthy food producing animals and food thereof. The monitoring of EFSA provides useful information to assess the risk of AMR transmission from animals to humans through the food chain. It is necessary to complement the current monitoring system by an AMR surveillance component covering bacterial pathogens of animals. These bacteria currently represent a major surveillance gap in the One Health strategy of the EU to tackle AMR. It is also necessary to start monitoring AMR in companion animals. Current antimicrobial resistance surveillance efforts have got limited help to veterinary practitioners and policymakers seeking to improve antimicrobial stewardship in animals. 
monitoring AMR in bacterial pathogens of animals in Europe could make a difference in the fight against AMR. Several European countries have already set up national surveillance systems of AMR in clinical animal isolates, yet they are highly diverse and fragmented. Other countries are also in the process of setting up their surveillance system, but without any European framework. Many other European countries currently lack AMR surveillance systems in diseased animals. There is an urgent need to build the European Antimicrobial Resistance Surveillance Network in veterinary medicine. Ears Vet. By complementing and integrating with AMR monitoring systems of the ECDC and EFSA, Ears Vet could represent a major step towards a stronger One Health strategy for AMR surveillance. EUGMRI has set up a multidisciplinary group of 30 experts from 14 European countries. Together and in a consultation with relevant stakeholders, we have developed a Nearest Vet surveillance framework. The main objectives of Ears Vet would be inform on AMR occurrence in specific animal pathogens, contribute to the development of evidence-based guidelines for antimicrobial prescriptions in animals, Investigate direct links between antimicrobial consumption and AMR. Support risk assessment of human exposure to AMR from animals via non-food related routes. Provide timely information for policymakers and medicines agencies. Contribute to estimating the burden of AMR in the animal sector. Ears Vet would operate as a network of national surveillance systems of AMR and diseased animals similarly to AIRS Net in the human sector. It has been designed following a bottom-up approach so that it takes into account what is relevant and feasible to monitor for national surveillance systems. Regarding the AIRS Vet surveillance scope, it was agreed to include 220 combinations of animal species, production types, specimens, bacterial species and antibiotics of interest to the animal health and human health. The group of experts discussed a harmonization strategy and defined antimicrobial susceptibility testing standards. It was also agreed to collect quantitative AMR data. The next steps will consist in launching a NIRSVET pilot phase. Participating countries will start to share and jointly analyze their data to finally produce the first NIRSVET surveillance report. To ensure the sustainability of NIRSVET we need strong political commitment. On the short term, we use EU and national decision makers to provide financial support for the ERSVET pilot phase, and we encourage member states to join this initiative. On the long term, ERSVET could be taken over by an EU body that receives the mandate to coordinate AMR surveillance in diseased animals. This would ensure the integration of ERS VET within the European landscape and contribute to achieving a stronger One Health surveillance of AMR. In human health, the antimicrobial resistance and antimicrobial consumption data from European countries is shared with the ECDC and assessed on a yearly basis. In order to shorten the time gap between data collection and its assessment, EU JAMRAI has piloted a near real-time surveillance system. For a two and a half year period, 17 partners from 11 countries participated in the study, collecting 41 indicators each trimester. Data was provided from hospitals and primary care at local, regional or national levels. Our aim with this study is to strengthen the current surveillance system in human health. Increasing the frequency of antimicrobial resistance and antimicrobial consumption data collection will help healthcare centers, health systems, member states gain advantage in the fight against antimicrobial resistance towards better health outcomes in the population. In addition to increasing the frequency of data collection, this quarterly-based surveillance system has introduced new indicators to increase the knowledge of antimicrobial resistance and antimicrobial consumption from healthcare centres. 
This allows each healthcare centre to monitor the evolution of their own data and carry out interventions on a timelier manner at local, regional, national or European level. The results of this pilot show that the implementation of a near real-time surveillance system in the EU is possible. The requirements to make it a reality are more institutional support, dedicating human resources, coordination of microbiological and antimicrobial consumption data sources, which implies more homogeneous indicators and modern integrated IT systems. Antimicrobial stewardship is one of the core strategies to combat AMR. It is defined as a coherent set of actions that promotes the responsible use of antimicrobials. There already are guidelines for the prudent use of antimicrobials in both human and animal health. However, the focus and the level of implementation of antimicrobial stewardship actions varies a lot across the European countries. EU Jam right has worked to identify the concrete tools to guide countries to be more effective in their stewardship efforts for human health and animal health. EU JAMRAI identified a lack of efficient and easily accessible tools to facilitate the implementation of antimicrobial stewardship at both country and healthcare level. After setting up a survey to identify antibiotic stewardship programmes in Europe, EU JAMRAI revised the available materials and structured them by level of care, hospital care, long-term care facilities and primary care. The result is a repository with existing guidelines, tools and implementation methods for antibiotic stewardship in human health. This repository has been well received and already used, among others, by the ARCH network. EU JAMRAI also organised a workshop with experts from 22 European countries who discussed the barriers and enablers of good stewardship programmes in their own countries. The results showed us that hospitals currently have far more actions in place than community settings. And while there has been a lot of recent action for family doctors, experience with long-term care facilities especially is lagging behind. There are success factors and problems specific, of course, to each country. But our workshop also helped us to identify that there is a lot of common ground and that countries can benefit from the findings of other member states. Building up on the results from the workshop, EU JAMRAI has conducted a qualitative study in seven different European countries to assess attitude towards core elements of antimicrobial stewardship at different levels of care – national, hospital, long-term care facilities and primary care. Our objective with this qualitative evaluation was exploring more deeply the experiences of implementation by professionals at different levels of care to find barriers and success stories. We focused on identifying themes that can be vital for better implementation of antimicrobial stewardship programs, and we are glad to see that the results are already being used to inform the content and action points of upcoming national action plans. In order to assess the level of implementation and acceptance of stewardship programs in animal health, EU JAMRAI developed a survey that was disseminated through partners and stakeholders. The aim of this activity was to identify the core components needed for implementation of antimicrobial stewardship in animal health and then provide this information to member states to support them in the design of their own stewardship programmes. The core components needed for optimal implementation of antimicrobial stewardship in animals is broader than in humans due to the variety of production systems in animal species. When developing a stewardship programme, it's important to define objectives, identify all actors that need to be involved, and periodically assess the progress to review the strategy when needed. Results of the questionnaire are already being used to propose a stewardship programme suitable for adaptation to different contexts and countries. Structured around different strategic and specific actions, it can be used in both companion and production animals. Now, we encourage member states to continue involving the key stakeholders in animal health in order to publish a white book on the implementation of antimicrobial stewardship in animal health. We need further consensus in the definition of a common structure, the description of the core elements, 
the roles of the each for professional and the indicator to assess the drug. The work of EU JAMRI to increase antibiotic prudent use should be sustained because it can be helpful in reviewing national efforts and improving knowledge. The qualitative study, for example, can contribute to its valuable information about the most appropriate core elements of antimicrobial stewardship programs and the most significant enablers and barriers for successful implementation. Despite European Union plan and guidelines, EU member states do not reach the same level of achievement on antibiotic responsible use. To overcome this barrier, the EU should prioritize further efforts on antimicrobial stewardship by developing European core elements for antibiotic stewardship programs for both human and animal health. We need to create the minimum framework to be used by all member states and increase antibiotic prudent use across Europe. Effective infection prevention and control measures are necessary to control the spread of infections like COVID-19, as well as minimize everyday healthcare associated infections. Fewer infections in hospitals result in lower consumption of antibiotics, thereby reducing antibiotic resistance. EU JAMRAI has worked on piloting the implementation of guidelines and frameworks to make infection prevention and control more effective, following two approaches, top-down and bottom-up. The first step was to identify gaps on European infection prevention and control programmes, conducting two surveys with different objectives. The first survey aimed at identifying the gaps between policy and infection control and practice, while the second one pursued identifying the gaps between organisational culture and patient safety. The results of the surveys depict not only the necessary institutional structures and resources needed for an effective infection prevention control implementation, but also the barriers to overcome and the behavioural changes needed. Some of the gaps are lack of active involvement of hospital administrators and clinical department heads, insufficient cooperation between hospital administrators, IPC teams and public health authorities and lack of human and budgetary resources. To fill in these gaps, EU JAMRAI has piloted the implementation of the Universal Infection Control Framework in 22 healthcare settings from five countries. The objectives of the Universal Infection Control Framework are firstly to raise awareness on antimicrobial resistance and healthcare associated infections and the consequences of these public health threats on patient safety. Secondly, to make infection prevention and control implementation more effective by strengthening and improving the already IPC implemented activities, clarifying roles in implementing activities without additional cost or resource. And finally, to train on basic infection control principles and on the use of tools to promote behavioural change such as audits, infection control gap assessments, the cost effectiveness of IPC and other communication and collaboration activities. Universal Infection Control Framework and its training tools are addressed to all infection control hierarchy. Hospital administrators, healthcare workers and infection control committees. Even though the personnel have to manage the pandemic of COVID, they reported that this crisis was as an opportunity to implement some of the essential activities. A tool like this can have an impact in changing the behavioural culture of the healthcare settings regarding the prevention and control of healthcare associated infections. Even though the implementation of the framework was challenged by the COVID-19 crisis, the review of the 22 healthcare settings depicts how effective these activities could be. After evaluating its implementation in these 22 healthcare settings, the Universal Infection Control Framework was updated and published and will be shared with all EU member states. 
The feedback by the participants showed that the universal infection control framework could have an impact in changing the behavioral culture of the organization, therefore its promotion to other healthcare settings is of highly importance to have more concrete and measurable results. Moreover, collaborating with scientific organizations and societies at the European level with the purpose of improving the already developed training tools as well as advocating for their establishment to the healthcare workers' curriculum will result in the sustainability of the actions. Using an evidence-based implementation model called the Breakthrough Series Model for Improvement, EU JAMRAI implemented guidelines for prevention of catheter-associated urinary tract infections in 30 pilot wards of eight EU member states and three non-EU countries in Europe. The Breakthrough Series Model for Improvement promotes collaboration between different levels and provides a structure that includes key elements for a successful implementation process. The model is following a bottom-up approach, involving the ward staff in the process in deciding and prioritizing changes. The model is designed to bring knowledge into practice and improve quality. Before starting the implementation, the hospital wards answered a survey to identify the areas that needed improvement during county prevention. The experiences of using the implementation model were positive. Among the facilitating factors were management support and motivated staff with an active role in decision-making and prioritising changes. Some of the barriers reported were cultural aspects and lack of resources. In terms of results, some examples that wards are reporting are decreased use of urinary catheters, increased compliance to standard precautions, procurement of closed collection systems and development of national guidelines on county prevention. We're glad to see that the results have gone beyond our objectives. Prevention of healthcare associated infection is a cornerstone in controlling AMR and participating countries have reported achievements such as the development of a national plan to reduce healthcare associated infections, implementation of guidelines for county prevention in more hospitals and continued use of the model in other hospitals for structured quality improvement work. EU JAMRAI conducted a survey addressed to member states and stakeholders that showed that healthcare associated infections are a priority at all levels of the health system. Effective inf infection prevention and control measures go well beyond hand washing. They involve also many actors and need a coordinated approach to ensure that no EU country is left behind. As COVID-19 has demonstrated to the world, the only step can, that can be taken to control the spread of a novel virus with pandemic potential are effective infection prevention and control measures. This crisis has also shown that we need a common framework. That's why UJAMRI urges Member States and the European Commission to develop core elements on infection prevention and control. With the help of seven voluntary countries, EU JAMRAI performed a mapping of European research priorities and gaps on antimicrobial resistance. Results highlight the current European priorities. All participating countries consider that fundamental research on AMR and strengthening surveillance are priorities. Six out of seven define as priority the assessment of best practices and strategies for antibiotic stewardship, and five out of seven consider that the development of antibiotics alternatives to antibiotics or diagnostics is also a pressing matter. The three critical gaps identified by this mapping effort include a lack of research in the environmental field, in the food safety area and on how to improve clinical trials for antimicrobials. While not being as alarming as these three gaps, there is a fourth gap of great concern, the lack of research in the field of infection prevention and control. As a part of our work in EEU JAMRI, looking at research and innovation, we looked at existing global research agendas 
in order to see that they matched up with the priorities of national action plans and their uh, priorities for research. We found that infection prevention and control was often missing in the national in the global research agendas. And IPC is such a critical part and needs its research. Um, IPC may not be considered sexy, it's talking about hand washing and other things, but as we've seen with COVID-19, uh, IPC is, an, is a very important part in order to control infections and AMR. If we can uh, have less infections, then we have less resistant infections. People need to realize the importance of IPC and our research in the field. IPC goes well beyond hand washing. Often IPC is our last resort when we don't have effective treatment for infection. So last resort to prevent the spread of infection. I think the COVID-19 crisis highlighted that well. IPC must be at the cornerstone of any healthcare system. For instance, purchase of zinc must be informed by evidence, evidence on how likely people are going to use them and evidence on how to disinfect them. That's why we need research in the field, because guidelines and evidence are still lacking. When IPC research projects compete for funding against other thematic areas, such as breakthrough technologies to combat climate change, big data against social inequities, or potential new cancer treatments, they are often perceived as dull, receiving low innovation marks. EU Jamrai has developed a list of IPC research priorities covering gaps in the field. This list was built from a literature review validated by two groups of experts, published on an international journal and widely disseminated through EU Jamrai network. Now we have identified these knowledge gaps. We need to include them in research agendas and ensure that the next necessary resources can be committed to fill them. In other words, what we want is facilitate the appropriation of these research gaps and aware policymakers about the need to finance invention prevention and control research. Antibiotic resistance imperils global health. New antibiotics, alternatives, diagnostics and strategies to combat AMR are necessary. Yet contrary to this public health need, antibiotic innovators and manufacturers are struggling. Physicians use new antibiotics as last resort to preserve their efficacy. Whereas this is sound stewardship, it also disincentivizes innovation since for company revenues come from unit sales. As a result, large pharmaceutical companies are leaving the field because the market is inattractive. Today, antibiotic innovation only rely on SMEs who are also failing to cover their development costs. During the last two years, three SMEs developing antibiotics went bankrupt. This shows that today the antibiotic market is not safe and is unpredictable. Simultaneously, shortages of older antibiotics are increasing. This problem has been exacerbated during the COVID-19 pandemic. Supply chains have been unable to meet demand as well as challenged by supply disruptions due to lockdowns and border closures. One of the aspects of EU JAMRAI that we're very pleased with is that we've had the opportunity to talk with policymakers about their perspectives on novel reimbursement mechanisms to stimulate antibiotic innovation. And policymakers have come with a very clear message. They want access to antibiotics for the right patient at the right time. It doesn't matter if it's an old antibiotic or a new antibiotic. They want access so that the patients can have the right antibiotic. Um, new antibiotics need to have better clinical evidence to understand where they can be used. Um, but the older antibiotics, we have a huge problem with shortages. This has been a problem before COVID. It's still a problem during COVID. Uh, one area that we've been calling for is greater transparency in the supply chain. So we can understand which of these older antibiotics actually have vulnerable supply and we can work on measures uh, to make them more robust. But first, we have to know which older antibiotics are in jeopardy. 
Several prominent reports have assessed the challenges to antibiotic access and innovation and included pool incentives in the recommendations. The objective of these incentives is increasing revenues for marketed innovative antibiotics. To understand countries' perceptions of these recommendations, EU JAMRAI performed in-depth interviews with policymakers and AMR experts in 10 European countries and three more countries from other continents thanks to the support of Global AMR Research and Development Hub. The aim of the interviews was to understand the barriers and facilitators for implementing incentives through frank and anonymous dialogue. While 11 countries expressed general support for antibiotic incentives, almost all are uncertain which incentive is appropriate for their country how to implement an incentive and how much it will cost. They prefer a pan-European pool incentive rather than setting up their own national solutions. So there is a clear need for specific detailed incentives that national policymakers can assess, tailor and implement to ensure access to important antibiotics that meet public health need. EU JAMRAI's legacy is a new beginning in the fight against antimicrobial resistance. We are delivering concrete measures with demonstrated potential to tackle this global health threat. We are handing over tools, thoughts, reflections and methods to take Europe forward. The next step is a renewed commitment from all member states and relevant actors to keep AMR reduction high on the agenda. And this is what we want to see, the fruits of the joint action coming, being transplanted across Europe, growing and re-growing and transplanting, and spreading out a culture of good practice which will enable Europe to become a best practice region and make it really safe for Europeans to go into their hospitals, to go into their fields, to go into their general practices and their schools and so on, and not be in fear of catching a highly resistant infection. Yes, AMR reduction is a considerable challenge, but feasible if all actors take concrete actions. We are accountable to the younger generations of the measures we take now. So we cannot afford to work in silo. We cannot afford to stop our efforts. We have all to continue our collective effort at national, European and international level.